Using Photoshop to make pixel art essentially is not ideal. It is not really what the software is made for. So I definitely recommend that if you're serious about creating this type of art, you do look into other uh, software uh, that might be more suitable for the aesthetics you're going for and so on. In my case, uh, and in the case of Doom in particular, it's one of the first games to use a lot of scanned source materials um, for 8-bit um, palette assets, which gave the game a bit of grit and, and sort of noise in the textures that other contemporary games did not have where all the art was hand-drawn from scratch. So I kind of embrace that in my own work for Doom, and um, in that case, approaching it that way, then uh, Photoshop actually works kind of well. Modern tools will allow you to A, transfer your skills to other game better, um, and B, um, have a bit more uh, freedom of expression and, and dodge some of the quirks and gotchas that are inherent to Photoshop. So I would recommend any aspiring texture artist in a broader sense of the term to look into Substance Designer uh, above all else, which is also owned by Adobe nowadays. But this is about Photoshop, so I'm gonna tell you how I approach things. Um, so this is a texture I've made, part of my texture set for Doom called Otex. So I have a bunch of layer um, layers here, and some of them are in folders. So there is a 64 by 64 folder where I keep the layers responsible for making the 64 by 64 squares. The overall picture is 128 by 128. That is sort of a standard for Doom. 128 height is definitely the standard. The original game engine does not support textures that are taller than 128. They can support wider though. Uh, on modern graphics cards, you need to have square textures. That is not the case for Doom. It was all software rendered. And so here I have all the sort of pattern variations and so on. Um, I drag them into this folder. So I have a layer for rivets. And you will see that the rivets are accomplished using layer effects. I use that a lot. Uh, there are some gotchas around that though. Um, I have the sort of beveling to create the four squares. That uh, is a combination of actual pixels in the picture, as are the rivets by the way, and uh, layer effects to, to create um, the actual look. So you can turn it on and off. You can see that it does a lot of things. It's not just the sort of beveling in like the frame itself. It is also some shading that sort of seeps into um, each tile. I will go over some of these techniques in more detail um, at another time. And so I do that for each pattern variation. There's also a 32 by 64, 32 by 32, and so on, depending on what um, sort of tile or pattern variations I've set up. So I treat this often as a base layer, as a material. So I create my material and make sure that looks good. And then I add uh, patterning on top that alters the shading of that material in order to create the different sort of patterns and layouts that I want. In this particular case, there is obviously the, the rivets and the 64 by 64 tiles, but there's also stuff like this, that if I turn it on, makes these indentations into the material. And I do that for, but the, like, so this particular one only fits um, for 64 by 64. I cannot apply these to 32 by 32. Let's have a look at 32 by 32. I do not go to 32 by 32 by activating this layer group, this um, folder of, of layers. Instead, I use layer comps. So if I click here, that uh, is a saved state of what layers were active. You see that 64 by 64 is now deactivated and 32 by 32 is deactivated just by clicking here. So I do this by um, activating the layers I want with the layer settings I want. And when the picture here looks the way I want it to, I can either update an existing one by right clicking on it and saying update layer comp um, or I use this button down here to create a new layer comp, create new layer comp. It is important that all of these are highlighted so it saves the settings for layer comp position and layer comp appearance. This includes layer effects that I mentioned. So in the case of the 64 by 64 logo, so this is 64 by 64, 64 by 64 logo, I apparently didn't have them on. So if I made changes 
to the effect applied to this logo that looks indented into the material here. If I made a change to that, then reactivated this layer comp, it wouldn't change back the appearance. I would now have lost this appearance because these were not active. So clicking them like this would make them active. I don't know that I need to do this, but I'm gonna hit update layer comp again, just as a reflexive behavior. As soon as I have something that looks the way I wanted to, I update the layer comp to save that state. But we were going to 32 by 32. So let's look at that. Now that's a new group. I can look into those. Whatever I have in here. Oh, I had more rivets. Make a square set of rivets. If I wanted that. That looks weird. Yeah, so there wasn't a whole lot in there. But there's some stuff out here. So this actually belongs to 32 by 32, but it was sitting outside of the 32 by 32 folder. And it's easy to get the PSD file messed up and because you, you, you look at the scroll bar in the lower right, you see that there's a whole lot of layers here. And yet if I expand all my layer groups, you'll see that it's even more. So there's a lot of layers in here and uh, it's easy to get lost among them. Um, and it's easy to just end up in the creative process, just having something that isn't neatly organized because you're just making shit. Um, and in that case, layer comps is a godsend because that will remember it for you. So highly recommend um, learning to use layer comps um, as a way to save different states inside of a file. It also allows you to, you know, experiment a bit more and go back later and, and, and sort of retrieve a state of the file. However, layer comps won't be able to retrieve everything. Um, it will not retrieve layer order. So if you change the order of things here, uh, the layer comp will not remember what, a prior order. Um, it will just activate the layers, turn them on and off and turn the layer effects on and off and do the layer positioning, the X and Y positioning inside of the layer. Um, it will not change the order of them. So you can mess up. So you, and I ended up doing this. You open up some file, you activate a layer comp. It doesn't look the way you thought it should because in the creative process, you ended up doing something that sort of corrupted that layer comp. So be careful. To show layer comps, like so, having it as a tab here or wherever, you go to Window and make sure that layer comps is active. Click it, and it's there. If it turns out, if like it opens as a tab here, so say I wanted it, it opened like paths does here. I could just drag paths into here and it becomes one of these expanding things instead.